For some time now, I've wanted to try out various different mortar rack designs, kind of put them through a stress test, see where they fail, see what designs that I like. So I go ahead and build some new ones for myself. I want to preface this by saying I'm not an expert, and this is not a video showing the safest mortar rack designs. It's more me exploring my own curiosity and seeing the designs I like. So kind of take all these tests at face value. If you're looking to build the safest mortar rack, I'm sure there's a wide range of information online. I would consult multiple different sources and then kind of ultimately make your own decisions there on what you think is best. And one last thing before we get started, because of the dangerous nature of these tests and the potential for serious injury, I feel like I don't have to say it, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Please don't try these yourself. For these tests, I didn't really wanna waste a whole bunch of wood, so I just made these five shot mini racks. And I'm gonna be testing the middle tube on all of them because I could be wrong, but I think that's the weakest spot on these racks. It would either be the middle or over here where it's just screws holding it on but I wanna try right here. For these first two, what I wanna test is whether or not I like no spacers or spacers. These are gonna be three quarter inch thick material on the tops and the bottoms, and that's just held on by two screws on either side into some two by four material that I trimmed to size. For the one with the spacers, it's just two finishing nails on either side holding that spacer in place, and then I have spacers on top and bottom. With both of these, I'm not really concerned with how these bottoms perform because they're just held on by screws up through the wood and I don't really think that's that great of a design. I would say the damage is minor with this one. There's a slight crack in the wood right here, as well as small indentations where the tube expanded and compressed those wood fibers. And then the downward force of the explosion actually started to pull the screws out of the wood. So there's a slight gap right here. This tube has a slight deformed shape. It's got a small split on one side, large split on the other, and it started to push that plug out of the bottom. This rack had a much more violent outcome. There's a big chunk missing out of the top of this side. This side is completely split apart. This vertical support right here is split down the middle and the bottom completely separated from the rack. From the looks of this tube, it seems like it was a much more violent explosion. So that kind of makes sense why that rack was so messed up. With these three racks, I made them the same. They're just five shot racks with no spacers. But with these, I wanna test various different thicknesses for the base material. So for this first one, it's gonna be three quarter inch thick base. This middle one is gonna be an inch thick base. And then this third one is gonna be an inch and a half thick base. And as you can tell by looking at them, they're screwed in through the side instead of screwed in through the bottom. So I think that'll probably perform a lot better. The damage for this one, both of these bottom sides have a strip of wood that was blown off. There's a crack running through the three quarter inch base. There's a small split in the wood here and a much larger split here. This tube had a failure that resulted in large openings on either side. And where that tube was contacting the ones next to it, it actually dented them as well. And then the plug started to get pushed out of this one. Thank you. 
with this rack, got a piece of wood that's split off of this side. And this side over here has several cracks running throughout it. The one inch base is intact, but we've got a small split in the wood here and a much larger split right here. This tube has two small holes on one side and one large hole on the other. And the plug also is getting pushed out on this one. This rack has a rather large split on this side and just a couple smaller ones on the other. The top rails were completely blown loose on the one side as a result of how bad that wood split. The one and a half inch base is intact, but we do have splits in the wood on either side. This tube has two rather large openings on either side. Pretty gnarly looking. And the plug was also getting pushed out of this one. With this test, we're going to see how well plywood does. This is a five shot rack with spacers. We've got half inch plywood for the sides, half inch plywood for the spacers, spacers on top and bottom. And then, like I said before, I'm not really concerned with how that bottom performs because it's just screwed on through the bottom. I think the plywood should do better than the regular wood, but we'll see. Both of these bottom sides and the base were completely blown off of this one. And each one of these sides also has a little chunk of wood that's missing. And then both of these pieces have splits in them. The failure of this tube was another complete split. Got a small little piece right here. Here's the bottom. All right, this is gonna be a stupid test. I don't recommend this design at all. Probably not gonna gain anything from this test. This is just a five shot rack with no spacers and a solid sheet of half inch plywood on either side. I really just wanted to see what would happen if you didn't give any room for that tube to expand. I don't have much hope for this design, but we'll see. This one got completely destroyed. I feel like that's a good illustration on why those solid walls is a bad idea. This one pretty much speaks for itself. All that's left is a bunch of pieces. A lot of the screws are bent. Here's an extreme example. This tube has holes of varying size kind of all the way around it. And the plug was also getting pushed out of this one as well. This is made out of scrap wood and it's kind of a sample piece for something I want to make myself in the future. I want to make myself a 40 shot rack in this style to replace my old ones. This has three layers of three quarter inch plywood. The bottom layer is solid and the middle and the top layer have holes drilled out so the tubes can slide in and out. And the bottom layer is on there really just to hold this straight up and down so it doesn't wobble on you. So I'm gonna test this middle one to see how it performs. I think it's a solid design, but I wanna see for myself.
I'm gonna take these screws out so I can remove this top and look down in there and see what happened. Okay, that looks like a pretty gnarly tube failure. Looks like that plywood split a little bit, but the hole's still intact. I'll flip it over and check out the bottom. This little section split pretty bad. There's the piece that came off of it. And even though that looks pretty bad, I can still push down on it pretty hard. And it's not gonna collapse or fall apart. This one's another pretty gnarly one. The sides are completely shredded. And that plug's also getting pushed out of the bottom there. I really enjoyed testing out these different designs. I think it's worth noting again that these are just five shot racks. So a 10 shot rack or greater would definitely have a different outcome. I chose canister shells from several different companies for these tests. While it's not necessarily a fair side-by-side -side comparison for the different racks, I felt like that more closely resembled a real life scenario because when I use the canister shells, I find myself mixing and matching different products. I was pretty impressed with the performance of these racks because even though some had a pretty significant failure, most of them were still able to hold the remaining tubes in place. Because of how I had these shells positioned in the tube, the failures were mostly concentrated on the bottom to middle of these tubes. So I don't know how these designs would really fare if the expansion was on that top rail. And furthermore, I'm not really sure how common of a failure that is. I would say what I liked most about these tests was getting to see more examples of how those HDPE tubes actually fail and also getting more experience with my remote firing system. For me going forward, I plan on making a couple 10 shot racks with no spacers and an inch and a half base. I plan on making one to test out to kind of see how well that holds up. And then if I like it, I'll go ahead and make a few more. Seeing the results of that last test, I will be making that 40 shot rack that I was talking about. I'm going to be making a build video for that one and I'll put it up when it's done. And lastly, I want to say thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.